Hey everyone, this is Josh with a fun security, cryptography, and software development tutorial for you today. In this video, we're going to be talking about cracking both passwords and cryptographic private keys. We're going to talk about the math behind brute force cracking and why it fails or becomes impossible once we get to bigger key sizes. Then we're going to talk about a workaround for this that is called a dictionary attack that takes advantage of the fact that many people don't generate truly random passwords. All of these are going to be talked about with several code project examples. So this is sort of a multi-code companion for several um, great educational projects that I have available. So let's first talk about brute force why it becomes impossible to crack large key spaces, and how we can figure this out. So if we're talking about cracking passwords, for example, there's a simple formula for determining how many possible combinations we're gonna have to go through to exhaust that key space. This is C to the L, complexity to the length power. This simply means uh, in terms of complexity, that all of the available characters we can use will serve as the base in this formula. So if we're talking about um, cracking all passphrases with upper and lowercase letters and numbers, the total amount of possible characters will serve as our base. Length is fairly self-explanatory. That means how long is the password? Uh, again, in our example, we'll say all eight character passphrases, or 10, or 12, or 20. So my code example for this is called PassPerms. This program takes um, variable lengths and complexities and computes a table showing all the possible combinations necessary. You can also give it um, a certain amount of uh, possible operations per second to calculate how long it would take to exhaust that key space. So this code really shows how quickly the amount of possible combinations and therefore the cracking time grows as we increase the size of our key space, and in particular, the length of our key space. Now, if we're talking about cryptographic private keys, such as those used in Bitcoin, the formula is very similar, but it simply always uses two as the base. Because when we're talking about bits, for example, a 256-bit key, each bit can either be zero or one. Uh, computers use what we call the binary number system. So a 256-bit key has 256 slots where each bit is either 0 or 1. My code example for this is called PK time, and this project similarly creates a table showing how um, many possible combinations and how long it would take to crack um, different key sizes um, in this binary number system. So 24-bit keys, 64-bit keys, 128 to 256 bits. This can either take uh, a given operation time or even use your computer to calculate how long it would take to crack uh, some Bitcoin addresses um, using that particular computer. Now, both of these code examples generate these tables and show one simple fact. There is an exponential increase in the amount of combinations and therefore the time it would take to crack these secrets. In other words, the longer this key or the longer the passphrase gets, it becomes impossible very quickly to crack large key spaces. It's not a simple linear increase as the key size grows. For every character you add, for every bit you add to the secret, it exponentially increases the amount of possible combinations a brute force attack would have to try, and therefore the amount of time it would take to crack. 
And for most practical purposes, when you start getting above 12 password characters or above like 40 to 50 bits, um, it becomes impractical or impossible to crack a key using brute force. A 20 character truly random passphrase or a 256 bit randomly generated Bitcoin key really can't be cracked by brute force. And it's not just a matter of having a bigger computer. Even the most powerful computers on earth simply don't have uh, the speed and the energy required to crack something like the 256-bit key space. When we talk about 256-bit keys, for example, the possible combinations are somewhere in the order of the number of atoms in the observable universe. Just an unfathomable, uh, unfathomable amount of possible combinations to try. The math is truly incredible, and I'm not necessarily even a math person. But passwords and Bitcoin keys do sometimes get cracked. So how do we do this? Well, there's an interesting workaround that takes advantage of the fact that many people don't use true randomness even to generate longer passphrases. So let's talk about the dictionary attack and how this can be leveraged to crack both um, passwords and poorly generated Bitcoin wallets. So first, let's talk about passwords. This is a fairly simple case. Many of us do not generate truly random passwords using something like a password manager or even diceware. Instead, we use English words, phrases that have meaning to us that we think somebody can't guess. But, as we'll see, what people can do is over time, as small passwords get cracked, and as more data becomes available on the types of passphrases that people choose, people can attack based on those specific words in a word list. This is called a dictionary attack, where instead of trying all possible combinations, as we would in brute force, we use specific words in a word list and variations on those words, such as adding characters like ones, exclamation points, substituting three for E, all those sorts of things. So we take our word list and we try cracking a password hash uh, using those words. So I have a code example for this called Dictionary Driller. This project is a very simple dictionary attack. It takes a given word list and a password hash and tries all the words in the word list by hashing them until it finds a hash output that matches the one uh, that we gave it to attack. So this code shows what a simple dictionary attack looks like. You have a predefined list of words and you have a password hash, that one-way function that we use to store passwords. And we keep trying words in the word list until we get a, um, a hash from that word that matches the target hash, meaning we have found the original password. You can't just go backwards from a password hash using any kind of formula. You have to guess all the possible inputs. And that's what a dictionary attack does. It takes a list of likely inputs and computes hashes until it finds a match. Now, crypto wallets are a little bit more interesting in this case. Private keys generally should be randomly generated using a cryptographically secure source on a computer. However, some people in the early days of Bitcoin um, did something called creating a brain wallet. Some folks got the idea that they could take a user-generated passphrase, just like a password you use for anything else, run that through a cryptographic hash, and use a 256-bit hash output as the Bitcoin private key. Once you have that key, you can derive an address to send and store your Bitcoins in. So in this case, we're essentially taking a normal passphrase and turning it into a Bitcoin key and address. And as the Bitcoin community found out, this is actually a very insecure way to approach things. Um, some folks like Ryan Castellucci have done research on this 
and they showed that um, many brain wallet passphrases, even that seem long and strong, have been drained of their Bitcoin um, using dictionary type attacks. So in this case, I have a code project called Brain Brawler. And this again shows a very simple dictionary attack, but this time against Bitcoin addresses. You give it a target Bitcoin address and a word list, and it will generate a Bitcoin address using each word in that list as the passphrase. If it gets a matching Bitcoin address, it determines that it has successfully cracked that using the dictionary attack. So again, we're taking the words in the word list, we have a target hash, in this case basically a public key hash, and we run through possible words and generate hashes until we get a match. Um, there are much more sophisticated projects out there that you can read about and really show how insecure brain wallets are. In the real world, if you use a brain wallet, there's a very good chance that somebody with a cracking cluster out there might find your passphrase and drain your funds. This is a very interesting attack against, again, poorly generated Bitcoin wallets. So we've talked today about brute forcing and dictionary attacks and the math of cracking secrets shows really how important it is to generate uh, both long and truly random secrets to guard our important things. And we have lots of fun code example examples to demonstrate these concepts. As always, the code here that I'm showing is available on the Chain Tutorials GitHub. It's free and open source. I hope you'll play with it or maybe even write your own programs to demonstrate these concepts and help yourself understand the interesting world of security, cryptography, and development. As always, I hope you found this tutorial interesting and informative, and thank you for learning something new with me today.